Hello, welcome to another one. So today we're going to be touching on the subject of impartation, which uh, Apostle Johnson Suleiman has this to say with regards to it. Money can't buy impartation. Money cannot buy impartations. Impartations are the major keys, the breaking point of every minister, the turnaround in any minister's life is traceable to the day of his impartation and that's very true if you look at any minister who you perceive to be influential powerful and great uh even pastor ea adepoe has this to say about how his ministry turned around and crediting it to impartation when i became general overseer the convention before i became general overseer our attendance was less than 700 and it was, it was a big convention. But then I, I wonder, ah, this is not good enough. And then I had an opportunity of visiting Kenneth Hagin Camp meeting. And I saw about 70,000 people from all over the world in one place. Ah. On my journey home, I told God, I don't want hundreds anymore. I want thousands. And the church began to grow. And then I heard of Yonggi Cho in South Korea. And I went there because they told me he had the largest church in the world. I went there and I saw a church. Ooh. a building large enough to take 50,000 people and they were holding seven services on Sunday ah. <laughs> and the pastor was begging people that those who have come to church this Sunday must not come next Sunday so that those who could not enter now can enter and I came back I said God I don't want thousands I want millions. What you see, you can have. Today, oh, that's amazing. So this reality of impartation has been misunderstood, misused, and there is one teaching which I came across, and I believe this is uh, one of the best teachings that you can get with regards to the topic of impartation to ensure that whatever you receive abides forever and you don't just become a fly-by-night minister. This uh, video is specifically for ministers and those who would like to grow in the things of God. So let's get into it. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Meet you in the next one as we listen to Prophet Kobas van Rensbeck as he teaches on impartation. One of the two, Joshua and Caleb, that said, we can. You know, the other ten said, so Joshua for 40 years, he walked with a can spirit. The others with a cannot spirit. He saw all the trouble. He saw, and now all of a sudden he's got to take over. So what qualified him to take over? The anointing, okay? Because it's the anointing, Isaiah 10 and 27, that breaks the yoke, okay? If Jesus is the Christ, what is Christ? We spoke about it yesterday, Jesus Christ the Lord. Christ is the anointing. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that makes you a leader. You know, you can have natural abilities to be a leader, but when it comes to God's things, when it comes to power, when it comes to grace, when it comes to miracles, it's only the anointing that will make you a leader, not qualifications. Paul says, I did not come to you with the eloquence of man's speech but I come to you in a demonstration of spirit what's the demonstration of spirit anointing so he says you know I didn't come to try and impress you he said when it comes to the law there's no one as learned as I am he said but I count it as loss I count it as nothing you know to to find the excellency of Christ so Paul says it's the anointing that makes you a spiritual leader first John chapter 2 verse 20 and 27 there's two awesome scriptures the one says beloved you have an anointing of the Holy One. Then verse 27 says, Beloved, you have the anointing of the Holy One. Okay? So there must be a difference for the Bible to say an anointing and the anointing. Okay? So I, I just one day decided if God said it, there must be something more to it. Okay? So now I'm going to look at a few things. Let's look at the life of, say, Elijah. 
Let's look at the life of King Saul. And uh, who else can we look at? I think that's more or less good enough for today. And then, of course, we are busy with Joshua. All right. So when it comes to Joshua, as from Exodus 23, right through to Exodus 34, that was uh, some of the most marvelous experiences that Moses had on the mountain. Where God appeared in glory. Moses said, I want to see your glory. God appeared in his glory. And God said to Moses, come up. And the cloud covered the mountain. Moses went up into the cloud. And the people, the 70 elders had to stay behind. And Moses went into the cloud. And Moses came out of the cloud, spoke to the people. Went back into the cloud, spoke to God. Came out of the cloud, spoke to the people. And the Bible says, but his servant Joshua stayed in the cloud. It's easy to say the anointing rubs off. We know that the anointing is oil, okay? The anointing has got an oily basis. And that's why the Bible calls it fat. The Bible calls it fatness, okay? So it's the fatness of the oil, of the fat, of the anointing. So anointing is a fatness. It's upon you. And if I'm full of oil and I touch you, you're full of oil. So, uh, and we talk about the anointing rubs off. If, if I am associated with an anointed man, I get some of that anointing, you know. But the problem is I only get some of that anointing and that qualifies it as an anointing. So if we look at the life of, say, a man by the name of Bernie Davis, he's, work, he's working in Manila and the, and the Philippine Islands. He worked with Jack Coe. We know in the 50s was a mighty man of God, took people out of wheelchairs, jumped on their hunchbacks, you know, twisted their broken arms. I mean, I would not advise you to do that if you don't hear from God. If the arms were skewed, you would take that arm and pull it right, you know. Sounds like it was break, but afterwards it was healed. So there was a man with him, a young man by the name of Bernie Davis, who followed all the while, you know. And, and they were in Jacko's tent one night and Jacko didn't arrive there. And they gave the meeting to Bernie Davis. So Bernie Davis stood up and preached, but it was under the anointing of Jacko. Ministered like, but there had come a time we had, we, where he had to get the anointing. So let's see, why is it that people sit in ministries and they minister in power and they move out of that ministry or out of fellowship with that ministry and they move with power for a few years but after a few years you never hear of them again you see many men of God making a rise in the kingdom of God and you see power you see signs you see miracles and people rise up and all of a sudden they reach a peak and all of a sudden phew, you never hear of them again and we call them fly by nights why do they call them fly by nights why do they call preachers fly by nights? They come and say, are you just a fly by night? Why do they call people fly by night? In Jude, they are called clouds without water, shooting stars. Okay, so they rise because they are associated and they are uh, mixed up with and they are flowing with anointed men of God or anointed women of God and then they go and they move out of fellowship or they think they are something and then they they rise to a peak and all of a sudden phew, they down and we call them fly by nights we've seen them in our country we've seen them in other countries mustn't I then follow men of God of course the Bible says in Hebrews follow those that by faith you know, has walked the road. Follow their example. We've got this cloud of witnesses round about us. We've got all these pictures of the Sundar Singhs and the Charles Prices and the W. Grants and the A. A. Allens and we Smith Wiggles with. Of course, man, I want what they had. I want to read their books. I want to listen to their tapes. I want to have what they have. I want to follow. I want to be associated with anointed man of God. I want to follow, you know, and be be associated with T. B. Joshua and Benny Hinn and any type of man that's anointed but at the end do I want an anointing that flows from the men of God or do I want the anointing that flows from the Christ okay now where does the difference come in okay let's look at Elijah then we're gonna come back to uh, 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 Joshua then Saul back to Joshua Elijah and he had a follower up by the name of Elisha remember now Elijah threw his mantle upon Elisha saying, you got to follow me. And then Elisha said, let me first go say goodbye to my parents. And Elijah said, what have I to do with you? You mean, you know, Jesus said, no man putting his 
hand to the plow and look backward, you know, is, is, is fit for the kingdom of God. And so Elijah said, all right, and they broke up the oxen and or cut off the oxen, broke up the wagon and just uh, brought an offering to the Lord. And uh, Elijah started following Elijah. When it came time for Elijah to depart from this earth, you know, and the Bible says a whirlwind had to take Elijah, not the horse and chariot. The horse and chariot didn't take him away. So Elijah didn't depart on a fiery horse and chariot. The horse and the fiery chariot just made separation between Elijah and Elisha. And Elisha cried out, my father, my father, horseman of Israel and things like that. But Elisha went up in a whirlwind, not in a chariot of fire. Elijah said to Elisha, what is it that you desire from me? Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit upon me. 2 Kings chapter 2, as from verse 9 through to verse 15. I want a double portion of your, your spirit upon me. Elijah said, if you see me, when I depart, it will be so. If not, then it shall not be so. So Elijah went and Elisha cried, my father, my father, you know, the horseman of Israel, you know, and the mantle fell on the floor and Elijah picked up the mantle of Elijah. Now to most people, he had it. He saw him gone. He got the mantle. Man, I saw it. Elijah said, if I see him. I walked with him for all these years. I was his servant all these years. I've got his mantle. Man, I've got the Bible of A.A. A. Allen. Man, I've got all. I've got the personal diary of Smith Wigglesworth. <gasps> I've got the last letter that Smith Wigglesworth wrote the morning he died. Oh man, I got his coat that he prayed in every night. Oh, you know, when, when, you know, when Jack Co. left, he left me a, a, a suitcase full of his notes and his Bible was in there and he left his shirt that he prayed in every night. Man, and now I'm walking. I've got the mantle. I saw him. I've got the prophetic word. He threw his mantle on me. God said I must follow him. And here he goes. If he walked away like that he would have had an anointing would have become a fly by night after a few days because he would only walk in what fell from Elijah all right but what made the difference when he came to the river Jordan with a mantle of Elijah hear his cry where is the Lord where is the Lord God of Elijah he didn't cry for the anointing anymore that's what he desired. He didn't cry for Elijah anymore. He said, now that Elijah is gone, I know where Elijah got it from. Now I must take his place. Now I say, where is the Lord? And God met with Elijah and it wasn't Elijah anymore. He didn't refer to Elijah. He didn't walk in the anointing of Elijah. The people said, look, the spirit of Elijah rests upon Elisha. But Elisha walked in the anointing that he personally got from God and they didn't refer again to Elijah. He didn't refer to Elijah. He just walked and they said, the Elisha, the man of God. Elisha, the man of God. Elijah, the holy man of God. You know, and all of a sudden, Elisha is a man. Elisha is a holy man. Elisha is the man of God. They don't say Elisha just once. Elisha, the man that threw water on the hands of Elijah. Once Jehoshaphat when they refer to him. But otherwise it's Elisha the man. Elisha the holy man. Elisha the anointed man. Elisha the prophet. So he walked into the anointing because he walked away from Elijah, if I can see you, to where is the Lord God. Now look at Joshua. Whenever Moses... Joshua was the servant of Moses over and over. Joshua the servant of Moses. Joshua the servant of Moses. But when Joshua, when Joshua had to take over... We look at Exodus 23 to 34, where every time that Moses came out of the cloud, the Bible says, Joshua stayed in the cloud. So what did Joshua say? He knew where the power of Moses came from. And whenever Moses, did, he could have left with Moses because he was the servant of Moses. But when Moses he said, I don't think I'm really needed now. So I'm just going to stay in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to look for the God that Moses has. Okay, so let's look at King Saul quickly. First Samuel chapter 10, Samuel prophesies, he says, Saul, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will be turned into another man. When the Spirit of the Lord, what's the Spirit of the Lord upon you? Anointing. Will come upon you and you will be turned into another man. All right? So, wow, I'm going to be the anointed. No, 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 no. He said, you will meet a company of prophets coming down the mountain playing with timbrels and harps. 
and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will be turned into another man. So what will make you another man when you meet other anointed men of God? Saul, the only way you'll be anointed is when you meet other anointed men of God. But then you must realize, if you want to move in that anointing, you've got to meet with God yourself. So what did Saul do? He was more interested in fame and fortune. He was more interested in the favor of people. He was more interested in being the man. You know, he, he hated the anointing. When he met the anointing, who was the anointing there? David. David, I mean, the harpist, the psalm writer, the anointed. The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon David and abided on him. But when it came to, to Saul, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and departed. Came and departed. And then in 1 Samuel chapter 16, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and it never came back again. But the Spirit of the Lord, the same day he departed from Saul, came upon David, and he never departed. Why? David had a relationship with God. When will I come and appear in your presence? When will you, when will you shine your face upon me? How long will you hide your face from me? So David's heart's cry is, Where is the Lord God?